How's it going everyone? Uh, in this video I'm going to be providing some commentary on a knife I've owned since last June. Uh, that knife is the Chris Reeve. Aluminum on. This is the uh, Wilson Combat version. The StarTac. And if you're only going to watch the first minute of this video, uh, pretty much what you need to know, this is a excellent, excellent, excellent folding knife. Uh, wonderful knife to, to own, wonderful knife to use. It's not perfect, it's got some problems, but in general, very nice knife. Um, this knife was $445, which is probably one of the biggest problems with it. And it's the Wilson Combat exclusive version. This is, I believe, the Gen 2 Umnumzan, due to the fact that it has a different pivot design and the addition of a lock bar stabilizer. And before going into any details, the work I use this for, a uh, quick overview, overview of the ergonomics and everything. Um, in general, it's okay. It's kind of a thin knife, so in a hammer grip, it can be a little bit uncomfortable, but not terrible. Um, very comfortable in a saber grip. Actually quite comfortable in sort of a pinch grip too. Works quite well. You can sort of index your finger right here before you get to the swedge. It's quite good if you need to do real fine detail cutting and everything. Um, again, comfortable in reverse. Comfortable in ice pick. Remarkably comfortable in ice pick actually. Uh, the fluting on the titanium gives you some nice grip but it's not all abrasive. The jimping is almost non-existent which is a little bit annoy annoying it's more of just an index point but the thumb wrap ramp is very nice when doing saber cutting the spine is nicely chamfered and everything and uh the pocket clip i mean the pocket clip when in a saber or hammer grip really doesn't come into your thumb at all it's quite a comfortable pocket clip same one as the sabenza um as you as is known with chris reeves a lot of attention is paid to detail everything is nicely rounded even the corner of the lock bar and the rest of the frame. It's nicely rounded, doesn't pinch you at all. Um, this is also one of the few knives where I have left the lanyard on it. I actually think the lanyard uh, adds some functionality to it. If I were to choke up and sort of try to hack small limbs off of a bush or something. So that actually adds quite a bit to functionality. Um, the lock bar is very easy to disengage you have this nice little thing sticking off of it sorry for the term tab tab is the term I'm looking for you got this nice tab which makes it very easy to disengage um, one of the things is the opening the knife is kind of strange it's the technique is very difficult to describe but you sort of push up you just sort of push straight up with with all of your thumb on the blade and it opens very easily and it's kind of weird and it's kind of hard to get used to but once you do it's very easy come second nature very nice knife and uh, quick commentary on the design in general it's excellent uh, it's kind of gimmicky there's some features which are kind of questionable like these little shock absorbers on the thumb studs which allow for silent opening or at least very very quiet. If you do that with a lot of background noise it's nearly impossible to hear. Uh, the glass breaker on it is also kind of funny but it does work and it's very functional and it's very unobtrusive. So it's a nice thing if you want a glass breaker. The other thing which is kinda gimmicky is the big swedge on the top of the blade which really it allows for increased penetration and everything but it actually makes a very nice scraper uh, one of the things I used this knife for was scraping adhesive and scraping wax off a of floor and that actually made it very made the task very easy and it also reinforces the tip a bit so you have a nice strong tip if you want to do some light prying which I also did with this uh, cleaning out some divots in a floor did the job quite well but really what this knife is designed for is to be a very, very, very nice tactical folder. Almost be a blend of a gentleman's knife and a tactical folder. So this thing is a user. This is designed to do work. It's got a fairly thick blade, fairly thick grind and everything. 
it's designed to do work and it's designed to do hard work. And in general, it does that fairly well. Uh, what I used this knife for was I did a little bit of landscaping work, hacking bushes, some small bushes down with it, uh, cleaning up, cleaning wax off floors, opening boxes, did some light prying. And I uh, also use it for food prep and just for some other everyday carry tasks. Um, it does the job quite nicely. Uh, yes, it does have a hollow ground blade, but hollow ground blades are kind of stupid. People think, oh, hollow ground blade, it's like a straight razor. This is pretty thick. And when you're cutting some foods, it does have a tendency to bind up a bit. Um, I also thinned the edge out a bit. This has what is roughly a 30 degree angle on it, 15 degrees per side. Um, it came with, I'd probably say, a 40 degree inclusive at uh, bevel and the other thing the other main complaint I have about this knife when I got it new was uh it came pretty dull it it was a very over buffed edge it didn't have a whole lot of slicing aggression so I, I did reprofile this and I did resharpen it and it does perform much better after that um what else Another thing, this is a fairly big negative. Uh, this knife is, when wet, is almost impossible to use. Uh, it, it just becomes nearly impossible to get the blade open. Your thumb just sort of slips off. And this knife has got a stout detent on it uh, due to the ceramic ball interface with the lock bar and the blade. So you, you need some force to overcome it. And when your hands are wet, you just can't do it. <laughs> I had to open this knife with two hands when I was working in the rain cutting up a box and it that's a pretty big negative if you're really looking for a working knife. Another thing is if you're wearing gloves this become this is also quite difficult to open. Um, another thing this can be a negative for some people since it is an all metal handle these do tend to conduct temperature quite a bit. Which, I mean, if you're out in the cold like it is right now, it's the knife is cold when you take it inside. Uh, another thing, the blade is S35VN. I'm not going to make any comments about edge retention. I don't quite want to go down the Jay Davis road. But something I have noticed about this, it I, I have put some damage on the blade. Uh, once when I chopped a fairly hard branch, it did put a very slight roll in the edge. And kind of the unusual thing is this knife, it, it takes damage easily and it's really hard to sharpen out. And I don't think if that, that necessarily means the steel is damaged or burned because the edges form cleanly. I mean, this knife gets very sharp with fairly little effort. Another surprising thing, it sharpens very easily. So I, I'm not really sure why that is. But, eh, I'll live with it. It's an easy, it, S35VN in my experience has been a very easy steel to sharpen, and it takes a fairly brilliant uh, polish to the edge with not a whole lot of effort. So, since Chris Reeve knives are a lot of times made with very high aesthetic appeal, that may be one of the reasons why they adopted the steel. It's easy to put a nice polish on the edges. And this knife did come with a very nicely polished edge, so... If I was caring just purely about aesthetics, that'd be a big thing. But in general, very nice knife. There were some people did give did create a bit of a stink when they made the Gen 2 version with the different pivot and the lock bar stabilizer. I really don't care. The original pivot required a proprietary tool you had to buy aftermarket to adjust. This current pivot, uh, Chris Reeve provides two Allen wrenches. And I really don't freaking care about the lock bar stabilizer. It's, it is what it is. I don't think it affects the uh, knife at all. So, but some quick commentary about sort of Chris Reeve knives as a whole. I consider the Umnum Zahn to be the penultimate successor to the Sebenza. This really, I really wish CRK would have started making more knives like the Umnum Zahn. It, it has a bunch of very nice features like the ceramic lock bar interface, which I think was supposed to take up problems with having to carbonize the lock face or lock bar slip and stuff. So I 
really wish they would have made more knives like this. And yes, I know, the Sabenza 25. But I think if they would have gone down the road of making more knives like the Omnums on, and if they would have kept the Sabenza 21 uh, bushing pivot where you don't freaking need Loctite and you can tighten it, it has perfect tension no matter how much you tighten it down, they would make much nicer knives. And it's really a shame that they kind of cheaped out on the pivots, considering how much thought goes into everything else. I mean, the the other two screws here don't need Loctite and they or anything because they gall with the titanium. They they stay in there. And I really wish more knives were designed like that. It's it's a very well thought out design, but. I, I really don't think Chris Reeve Knives is going in that direction. The Sabenza 25 knife, which has kind of a poorly ground blade, this kind of overly thick flat grind, and a cheaper pivot, which is less idiot-proof than the bushing, I kind of don't like the direction they're taking some of their knives. But, hey, I got the Umnums on, and I, I'm very happy with it. It's not a perfect knife. It doesn't cut as well as a lot of other knives. Its ergos are not as good as other knives like the uh, Spider Cub Military. But as a nice, elegant worker's knife, the Umnumzan is excellent. And I am quite happy with mine. I'm not really going to say that it's worth the kind of ridiculous price they command, but. It's definitely a very high quality knife and a very capable knife for a lot of general utility work. So, I hope I didn't ramble too much in this nice little commentary. Feel free to leave any comments. Alright, have a good one.